Okay. <clears throat> okay, hi. We're um, starting level seven, uh, RASA level seven of case studies. So in this class, we're going to learn how to organize the material and put together an interpretation or how to do a consultation and see, get a time perspective on someone's life, or at least the basic time perspective using the transits. And um, we've already done, I'm going to spend a little time recapping because we've come through a lot of different layers of developing the language of astrology right now. Um, when we start, when we get into our first level, level one, it's like we run into the ocean, like we run into the ocean of relevance and of meaning of, um, just double Okay. Yeah. So we run into the ocean of meaning. There's so much meaning. Everything has meaning. Everything's connected. Everything's relevant. How incredible. And we start expanding it. So we, as we start learning what it, expand the concepts of the signs of the Zodiac and the lightness and the darkness and the houses of the, and the hours of the day or the houses of the day and it's light and darkness and the meaning of each of the levels of the planets, the consciousness, and then the, aspects interrelating the levels of planetary consciousness and showing the stress factors involved in it. So we first you learn all the main categories, the main basics of what each thing has a certain meaning. That's the first level. That's jumping in the ocean. <clears throat> then the next four levels we spend, this is the really area that's the kind of the personal therapy or the really integral learning by personal experience and seeing how it's connected to you. We go through each planet and each sign and we're relating to each planet in our chart as we go through that and we see each of the categories and how they work and we see how they're associated to our lives. And this is merging the connection. It's, it's like we're beginning to build the boat of significance that can float or navigate on that ocean. So then we take the how then we did the planets and the houses and we saw how each planet works in the, in the rising, the setting above, below, and, and the intuition, feeling, sensation quadrant, and then, then, then each of the categories. So there's the signs in each of the categories, there's the houses in each of the categories. And each time we're really learning about the planets, we're seeing how the planet, we're learning about the signs, we're learning about the houses, but we're seeing how they apply to each planet, how planet is functions, how this function is affected by the sign it's in. So basically, the sign of the zodiac is the attitude that, that the planetary function picks up. We get that we have all these different levels of functioning, and each one has its attitude, which is the sign of the zodiac. And with that, so the Mercury picks up the attitude, and then it starts to make sense out of things. The Venus picks up the attitude of the sign, it's and it starts to make choices according to those attitudes, positively and negatively. And in life, we're growing and we're developing all the experiences of each of the planets and their attitudes. And as we tune into ourselves and we study, we come to realize how we're connected like this and that we are. So that we're connected and that that each of these categories affects us and we're involved with it. That's the work of the level two, three, and four and five, really, of ter interpreting the natal chart. So really we're, the planets, when we learn the planets, they're the most mystical things. <clears throat> These planets like a different person or like a different god or like a different psychological confluence, uh, psychological complex. It's like a different level of consciousness and each has, each planet has its own function. So as we get to know a planet, it's getting like getting to know a person. We're, um, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> the, um, each planet's like a person. And, and, we get to know a planet in one way, and then as we grow, we ex as we develop our sensitivity or awareness of it, we start to see how it functions on many levels and in many factors and in many ways on each of the levels of each of the categories and the signs of each of the categories and the houses, and how that planetary energy is still its own special, unique energy, and it has its positive and negative take. So really, we're always at the foot of the gods of the planets or the foot of the complex of the of the dimensions of consciousness that we're developing, right? Um, the Arab world, they wouldn't call it um, 
the gods. They would call it the angels. There's angels or gens that can work positively like angels or planet, or can work negatively like genies. But um, it's still the same functions, these levels of layers of consciousness there. It's one of the beautiful things of astrology. It's true for everyone, regardless of race, religion, place you're born, status in life. These same cycles go on and we're born and we experience a certain number of them in our lifetime. And we're born with certain, we start with a certain starting point. So when we get, once we got the planets, then we see each of the planets more specifically. Then we begin to see, so each way, each level, we're learning more and more about the planets expanding. Then we, when we got to the aspects class, we started adding the interaction between the levels of consciousness, between this, it was starting to see how much stress there is involved with any planet's relationship to any other planet, so between any level of consciousness to another level of consciousness. So by this time, we've got the planets and signs, planets and houses, the planets and the, and the aspects, and, and then we have the, um, we have, we see that then we see the relations with the signs of the houses. We went through the signs and the house cusps, not as thoroughly. We really did the angles, and, but the, the worksheets were there to go along. But you can really, just as you have each planet a function, each house has an area of concern and it, it picks up the attitude of the sign it's in. It has its categories and its rulerships. And this is another dimension of how to layer of how to interpret a chart or how to navigate around one's character or anyone's character. So by the time we go through that, we get to the level five and we do the all the 30 steps of interpretation and we've gone through them, we have a we've we spent a certain amount of time, a certain amount of time on understanding ourselves and how we're connected to astrology or to the planets or to life or to the universe. We see how it's working. No, it's not it's an observation, a experiential sense, and our mind begins to align with and see that it's so. You know, our, so um, once you get this 30-step procedure down, you, you know how to look at any point in a chart and go into it deeply and, 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 and analyze it. You have this in-depth thinking developed. And this in-depth thinking and learning how to navigate through to get a realistic interpretation of a natal chart covering all the basic factors. So, so the main core is the planets and the sign, the house it, it's colored by the sign is that it directs itself, its energy into the affairs of the house it's in, and it does so easily or difficultly according to the aspects to it. That's a simple way of summing up planets and signs, houses and aspects. Then, when we got to the 30 steps, we went, we went through some point totals. We went through how many points out of all of it are in each of the categories for the signs and each of the categories for the houses and what were outstanding combinations of what stood out and how these outstanding groupings of planets or, 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 how, or perhaps understanding the one that where there's the most planets in an area or where there's the least planets in an area, we began to see, get another insight into the texture of the chart. So this is part of the natal interpretation. And it's the beginning parts of it, the pattern type, phase of the moon, you know, and going through each of the categories, um, glancing at the sun, moon, and ascendant. But this is necessary to get a realistic sense of a person or a sense of ourselves. And um, this is what I call, it's by the time we've got this, we've built the boat that can float on the ocean that's not going to sink in the ocean of all this meaning. We're not going to get lost in it. Well, we still can get lost somewhat, but we have a boat. We're not going to sink and get overwhelmed in it. We can begin to navigate. We can begin to go out and go further than just putting our toe in at the shore. So the um, when we started, then once we got to that, we we went to the transits last class. Last level, we studied the transits, the timings of each planet. So each planet in your natal chart is like an alarm on a clock. It's pulled on a clock. So 
we've got our, you know, like our 10 alarms, the sun, moon, and the planets, we have our alarms. And each of these alarms is set in a set place at the moment we're born. Like the time is frozen for an instant, and that becomes our horoscope or the DNA of our life or DNA of our character. It's our genetic code. It's our structure of how we're going to be. Everything we can be in our potential at our birth is already in us. Everything that we're capable of is in us. The challenge becomes how much of it can we make happen and how much of it, like if you have a seed for a tree, the pattern of the tree is already in the seed. But as the tree grows, you don't know if a branch is going to get broken or if something hits it or you don't know how much of it's going to actualize. Same with people. We were just trying to see how far, how much we can stretch and what we can do with what we've got. So that's the first level of really using a chart. How do I do? How do I get more of my energy out of my life? How do I use my energies properly so I'm not getting caught in things that don't work for me? Or so like, how do I align and use my energy better? That's great use for astrology. How do I get better? Like, and what would I be good at? What can I do? So many basic questions come up from this. But so the planets are like alarms on a clock, but there's like 10 alarms. And as every, but the, the planets don't stop. The alarms are set at the moment you're born, but the planets don't stop moving. The world doesn't stop just because you got on. Everything keeps moving, keeps changing in time, keeps moving on. And as each planet moves around, it becomes one of the 10 hands of a clock that are moving around the wheel. But each planet moves at a different speed and goes around different speeds. But whenever one of those planets come along and touch, where one of your alarms are or where one of the planets are in your chart or perhaps conjunct it or oppose it or square it, it sets off the alarm. And whenever the alarm gets set off, something alarming happens in our life. Something that it's alarming, challenges happen. There, there, crises times come up and build up, but the crises times and these alarming situations are really opportunities for growth and for peak, peak experiences. And rarely are they comfortable or peaceful. They're challenges. And we have to deal with them and we grow through that. So we studied each of the planets and we watch each one moving around. We, well, really, when we're moving, watch the transits going around. We work mostly with Saturn because it's the main backbone and key. It's the key to understanding the natal chart. Like your sun is the most important. Of course, the moon is. But the Saturn is your sense of authority and responsibility and Jupiter is your understanding of what's responsible or not and how far you can take things and Mars is what you do so Jupiter is the guiding light to guide the Mars towards being more accomplished or accomplishing things or perhaps going against Saturn and try not to be accomplished and run away from all those things or move away from all those things in which case over time accomplishments increase and accumulate or they don't so that's the Saturn. We did a lot of work on the Saturn going through the transits. And then we looked at the Jupiter then we, and watched the 12-year cycles going around. And really, when you're trying to understand Jupiter, it works according to how well aligned to Saturn it is. If Jupiter understands Saturn, duty, responsibility, respect, accomplishment, then it guides Mars correctly. If it misunderstands or, or, or thinks it isn't aware of what the work that has to be done is trying to go anyways. It can speculate, it can exaggerate, it can get us in trouble that we, and cause more failure. So a good Jupiter is a, really makes a huge, a good guide makes a big difference. Bad guidance, bad friends, bad people, bad advice, it can cause a lot of problems. So, but you have to, the Jupiter had to be seen in the light of how it aligns with Saturn and understanding what Saturn is doing. And then the Mars could be seen as to living up to the Jupiter understanding and Jupiter encouraging what needs to be done to accomplish things. And these cycles work with these are what we do each day, Mars, how we expand and what we accomplish. Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. Muscles and bones and the understanding of how to use them. 